The City of Columbus is updating its zoning code for the first time in over 70 years, a task that might leave some of you feeling a little lost and zoned out. Today on City Chat. Council President Hardin and Council Pro Tem Dorans, both advocates for transportation and infrastructure investment, are here to discuss Zone in Columbus, a proposal outlining the initial focus areas for modernizing Columbus's zoning code. Council Pro Tem Dorans, Council President Hardin, it's so great to have both of you guys here today. Thank you. Excited to be here. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, I feel like over the years you two have bonded a little bit. <laughs> like, you guys are like really good friends. <laughs> yeah. Was it over this zoning code <laughs> issue, or can you guys talk a little bit about that? Uh, zoning itself uh, is such a dense and in the weeds topic. You have no choice but to try and liven it up from time to time. And yeah. you know, I think one of the things that uh, when I joined council back in 2019, when there were a lot of discussions about what the future of the city was going to look like, right? And uh, zoning has so much to do with that because at its most basic, zoning is our land use policy. We're going to say what can be built you know, in this particular area of the city, how that's going to impact residents. And I think particularly as council has uh, grown, especially over the past, um, you know, four or five years, uh, both in members and also the t type of uh, topics that we're tackling. Uh, it all goes back to land use, right? When we talk about transit, when we talk about economic development, when we talk about housing, um, zoning has so much to do with that. So I think the council president and I, um, you know, have really lived that on, a, on an everyday basis when people talk about the aspirations of what they want for their neighborhood. At the end of the day, um, that conversation is going to make its way back to zoning in some way, uh, even though it can be a very boring and opaque kind of topic. But I think both of us have really uh, dug in and really realized um, how important um, this zoning code rewrite is uh, to the future of Columbus, and that's something I think both of us really share. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I uh, <clears throat> you asked, did it bring us closer? I was, as council president, you know that I, I get to assign committees to uh, my colleagues, and um, when I assigned uh, Council Member Doran's the zoning committee, I wasn't sure if that was going to end our relationship, <laughs> because <laughs> the truth is it's a very um, engaged committee, uh, there are a lot of stakeholders, and what we know to be true when we talk about land, land use, and residents is that to so many people, to almost all of us, our home, the property that we own, is our wealth and our wealth building. And so people take it very, very seriously, and so there are not too many conversations that are easy or, or quick. Uh, they take time. Um, you have to have um, uh, care and concern. You have to also... Uh, know what's within the bounds of what we're actually talking about to keep people focused. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot of work. And so uh, when I asked uh, uh, President Pro Tem to be chair of zoning, um, I was grateful that uh, he said yes. And, and actually, truthfully, seeing the work that he has done over the last two years as zoning chair, uh, it has made me more grateful and more appreciative and really uh, have grown my respect for him as a leader, as a um, uh, as a council member and as someone who really is shaping uh, the future of our city. So oh. I guess it has made us closer. Yeah. Yeah. I will say I didn't say yes the first time. So. <laughs> no, several <laughs> times. Yeah. Um, talk, talk me into it a little bit. Um, I've, I've heard you mention um, this this whole zoning issue, housing issue, is, is kind of like a tsunami. Yeah. Yeah, could you? So I, I think that's really important to think through. So, so this year, 2024, is a year that we will look back on and say, did we do the things that prepare us for the growth that we knew was coming? Um, uh, Zone In and Link Us are twins in my book. Um, Link Us is our transportation and mobility plan, and, and Zone In is how we will build and, uh, and, uh, and use our land productively for um, uh, our community. And so what I say is, is that uh, uh, the growth that is coming to Columbus is like a tsunami. You can see it kind of out there, you can hear people talking about it, but a lot of folks um, kind of don't want to change our behavior right now as we know something big out there is coming. Yeah. And my point is, is that if we do the things now to prepare for this thing that is growing, that is coming, then maybe that wave that comes in of new people can lift all boats instead of wash us out or change yeah. our quality of life. And that's what zoning is trying to do, is to make sure that this growth is good for the folks that have been here, legacy folks, and good for the folks who are coming in. Can you uh, talk about zone in what it's going to require from community members? Yeah, so, you know, our current zoning code is over 70 years old, mm -hmm. right? So there's very little in government that we're doing exactly the same way as 70 years ago, right? right. Um, 
I mean, think about like the values that were sort of in play 70 years ago when that code was originally written. And we think about redlining, you think about ways in which that code was developed that was more exclusionary, right? It was more about keeping, you know, groups and people away from one another rather than bringing a community together, right? And you can see that legacy all across Columbus right now. There's no secret that Columbus lives the legacy of economic and racial segregation to this day, right? And um, the zoning code had a lot to do with that. Um, and I think if you come to council um, every month, Monday night at 6.30, we have a zoning meeting, right? And that zoning meeting is um, people in our community that are being able to, wanting to say, hey, this parcel is zoned for X, we want to rezone it for Y. Or we want a variance to allow us to have an exception from the code on this. And every Monday, we've got sometimes dozens, if not more, of these requests. And that is because when you think about where the city was 70 years ago, with those legacies baked into it, and where we are today, and where we aspire to be in the future, uh, we really have some really key differences compared to where we want the city to be going. And uh, this zoning code itself is a reevaluation <laughs> of what we want the city, how we want the city to grow in a way that's far more equitable, far more connected to transit, far more connected to actually more dense housing options, because we know right now when the council president is talking about the tsunami, one of those key parts of the tsunami is the housing crisis that the city faces right now. Mm -hmm. You know, right now uh, we have not enough housing for folks in Columbus, so this is no, nothing more complicated than basic supply and demand, right? If you have more demand and not enough supply, um, values for everything go up, whether or not it's owner-occupied, whether or not it's rentals, and we're seeing that happen right now. We're seeing folks, you know, I bought a house a couple years ago when my family grew. Um, I had bought a house 10 years before that in Columbus, and those two experiences could not have been different. Uh, the amount of hoops you had to jump through, the amount of um, you know price increases that happen, yeah. and think about that for families that you know don't have the, the same means as as others do in our community. What that means for them, right? Yeah. So what we're talking about doing right now is a comprehensive rewrite of our code. And when we talk about um, that zoning meeting that happens on Mondays, typically where uh, residents have their voice to bring to the table of they like what's coming through, they don't like what's coming through, they're able to engage with their area commission prior to things coming to council. Um, but that also chews up a lot of time, effort um, throughout that process, right? We'll see projects take a year plus to come through that uh, bureaucratic process partially because we have not reevaluated our land use in 70 years, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it may be a perfect project that comes through that everyone says, yes, we love this, this is great, um, but it's still gonna take months, if not years, to get to the point where they can break ground and build that new housing unit, right? Yeah. So right now, what we're doing is reevaluating our land use to say, what is most appropriate on these parcels right now in 2024 and into the next two generations, right? Mm -hmm. So that is why it's really important for residents to engage with the zoning initiative on the front end, um, because we need their voices. You know, this is gonna be the opportunity for them to really have a meaningful say in what that change looks like right now. Because when we talk about this 12,000 plus parcels across the city there in, in, in the first phase, you know, this is gonna be the opportunity for folks who own those properties, who live near those properties, be, be able to come to council and say, you know, hey, this is the plan for this parcel that I live next to or, or I own. This is the kind of um, development that the city is going to encourage on that site. I like that. I don't like that. I'm indifferent to that. Explain more. Now is the time for folks to engage because this is a big difference compared to our current process, mm -hmm. which relies on that project by project sort of negotiation at the local level and then coming to council. We're trying to do this in a much more comprehensive manner so that we have, you know, very transparent rules that everyone can play by uh, and everyone ha really knows what we're sort of encouraging because, again, at the end of the day, we really know that when the council president talks about that growth of tsunami coming towards us, we have to be more intentional about it. And this zoning rewrite is the opportunity for us to be more intentional, which also means that we need residents on the front end uh, to be intentional with us about what their expectations of this code can be for, that, for them in, the, in their neighborhood. It is kind of intimidating to think about you know, okay, what do I bring to the table exactly? Like, what do I say? You know, do I just like come to council and say, oh yeah, I need like a grocery store, like a little bit closer, more convenient? Or how would someone approach that? No, exactly. I mean, zoning can it, on the outside seem intimidating, but it, what you just said is exactly what we're talking about. How do we um, use land to encourage uh, how move, people move around? How do we bring people together? How do we uh, create enough density where a grocery store can be in a neighborhood? How can we encourage um, uh, small businesses uh, to be uh, in, a, in a, a community and have mixed use, mixed income communities? Uh, 
Principal Tim talked a, a lot uh, about uh, equity, and, and that is a huge part of what we're trying to do, have equity in the process, because even though we are um, focused on 12,000 partials uh, in this phase one, um, just last year, council rezoned or had did uh, 10,000 variances, and, and that's a lot as well, but the inequity is, is that for the folks who did that, they usually had to hire an attorney to change their land use. They had to take time out of their, their busy schedules um, and come down. Everyone doesn't have those uh, little resources or the time to do that. And so uh, by making the best use, and as council member keeps saying, uh, to come now and engage with us so that we can bake this into the zoning code for all of us. Uh, this is the time. Um, but at the end of the day, equity comes down to process, but also in allowing for uh, folks to live in a mixed income, uh, vibrant communities. And if, if uh, we don't do things like this zoning uh, update, um, people will be priced out of, of uh, transit areas, uh, walkable neighborhoods, um, uh, all kinds of communities, or even the city of Columbus as we continue to grow. Uh, we are really trying to focus on how do we build healthy communities that, that give dignity to uh, our uh, residents so they can live, work, play in a, in a uh, defined area. What are some of the, the main goals of zoning Columbus? You mentioned a little bit, you know, um, are there specific goals of zoning? Yeah, so I mean, there's five different goals that council adopted via resolution earlier in the year, and that focuses around transit, you know, housing, uh, fostering more sort of neighborhood businesses, because right now, if you look at our current zoning code, there's a clear difference. You look across the city, you'll see residential here and commercial over here, um, and they don't really mix, right? Um, whereas where you see more um, sort of, I think, progressive zoning across the country, it's more about encouraging, again, to what Council President said, neighborhoods that you can you know, live in, shop in, and play in, in which all those different neighborhood amenities are nearby. And as we've talked about as well, one of the key uh, goals has been to really to bake equity into this code, again, to really establish, um, I think, transparency in which everyone's going to play by the same rules that, uh, to Council President's point, just because you have a lot of money and can hire a zoning attorney and come down to Council and get your variance or rezone. Zoning, um, that you can do that, but other folks without those resources can't do that. Uh, it's about establishing, you know, really key good design built into this. I think this is one thing that we've seen historically in Columbus, where we'll have a certain development be proposed, and the folks behind that development will propose something that then you know, is negotiated with neighborhood groups and council over an extended period of time about what that building functionally is going to look like, whether or not there's. Uh, parking variants, whether or not there's changes to, to the design of the building. I think one of the really keys of what's being proposed here is the code itself will have those those design standards baked into it, right? So we won't have to negotiate project by project anymore. And I think that is one thing that has chewed up a lot of time in that process. And also from a neighborhood standpoint, we go back to talk about equity. There's areas of the city that have you know really engaged residents because they've got the time and expertise to, to be able to really engage with some of those developments that are happening in their community. And there's other parts of Columbus that folks are really, really busy trying to put food on the table, take care of their families, and maybe don't have the time to really go down and uh, to their area commission or to council and really advocate for those kinds of things. Uh, and we see a clear difference in how that development is manifested in those parts of the community. Yeah. And that's you know part of that broken process in which um, the 70-year-old code has sort of, in, you know, uh, unfortunately encouraged some of these um, inequitable outcomes to occur and having those design standards baked in in which that is normalized across the city but also specific design standards for specific areas of the city as well uh, to try and make sure that as Columbus grows as these neighborhoods change that it is as appropriate within those neighborhoods as as we can be while knowing that change is inevitable so I think you know those are sort of the the key goals that were outlined in that resolution earlier this year that have sort of guided the zone in process um, as it's come to us at this point and fundamentally once the code code is, is introduced at council. I think those goals are going to continue as we start our public engagement from a council standpoint. You know, we're going to have a number of public hearings at council, out in the community. Uh, we're going to have the you know, ability to engage with our area commissioners and other uh, community leaders on this. Um, but those have been the goals that we have said out loud to the community that are really driving this effort. And um, most residents that have you know, engaged, I think, to date, and there's been thousands of different engagements. There's been dozens of different public uh, meetings across the city. Uh, there's been a survey that's been filled out by nearly 10,000 residents uh, on, on the topic. And uh, most folks, when they are asked about these goals that have been articulated, 
folks say, yes, that's exactly the kind of thing that we want to see out of the zoning code to encourage. Yeah. Uh, and that fills me with a lot of hope that, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, change is always scary to folks, but at the same time, if we're trying to be transparent and upfront with folks about what that change looks like um, and why that change is necessary, yeah. um, you know, I'm hopeful that, you know, we'll be in a position where uh, we'll be able to pass something that will be very meaningful to, to the city of Columbus. As far as the process goes, what, after we gather all the data and everything, um, how long is this going to take to... Yeah, so, uh, so, one, so soon the mayor and the administration will pass the baton to council, and it will be uh, in council's court through the duration. And what that means is there's been a lot of work done so far. I think it's really important because this is a big change and because we're talking about our, our community's future that we actually listen to our residents. Mm -hmm. And so over the last 18 months, the uh, administration has uh, been talking to uh, the, the partial owners and, and folks adjacent to it, I think 13 or 14,000 uh, engagements uh, sent out to uh, folks uh, uh, who are, are a part of it. We've had survey uh, where I think 6,000 people uh, engaged in the survey to say, does this look right? If, you, if this was built over uh, on this uh, street by you, mm -hmm. how would you feel about it? We got all this feedback and that is the product that is being now uh, delivered to council. And so uh, next week uh, at our, our next council meeting, we will take up uh, um, a resolution that will then start a, another community engagement process because we are going to be radical listeners. We are going to um, uh, make sure that through hearings um, and um, conversations with our residents, with our area commissions, but also with uh, pastors uh, and youth groups and um, uh, folks who, and, and single mothers. Like we want to hear from folks who are in our community about how uh, land use and, and how they get around uh, um, and how they want to live in the future uh, will work as we pass this code. So we will be aggressively um, having different community outreaches. Council President said, you know, the baton's being passed to council. And there, there's already been a lot of work right now that I think helped to impart, like, what's going to come to council. Uh, but at the same time, we know that you know, things get real once there's actual legislation, right? Yeah. Um, so now we will have the ability for community members to react to something. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of the engagement thus far has been very aspirational of like, what would you like to see? Right. How would you yeah. feel about this? Mm -hmm. uh, would this be, a, you think, a good thing? When you talk about these goals, how do you feel? What, what do those goals mean to you, right? It's been a lot of, I think, again, that sort of aspirational engagement. Uh, folks are about to have something to say, I like that, I don't like that, I don't know if I like that. Um, and one of the things that we really have to do going back to i think the the overall topic here is that this can go in the weeds so quickly right so how does this really at the end of the day manifest itself on that parcel that's down the street from me what, what does that really look like what does that what does that change really possibly mean for me so you know one of the things that will be open is a zone in gallery that'll be downtown here uh, with free parking for folks to be able to come down to in which they will have the opportunity to sit down with a city planner so a city of columbus employee that knows this code in and out um, so whether or not you own you know, a piece of property that's going to be rezoned, whether you live nearby one, you can sit down with someone who will take the time personally to walk you through that so you can actually understand. Because a lot of this stuff is, it ain't easy just to see a bullet point and, hey, we're going to move on from there. And I think a code itself that we're trying to produce is one that is more flexible. So again, our current code is very restrictive. You can only do X, you know, and that leads to a lot of the rezonings and variances that come to us. What we want a code is more flexible. You know, uh, we don't want a code that just allows folks to build whatever they want, whenever they want, wherever they want. But at the same time, we want to have a code that allows some flexibility to make sure that you don't have to go through a 12, 24-month you know, bureaucratic process to build another housing unit, right? Mm -hmm. So I think having, you know, staff who are experts in this be able to sit down person to person and go through those things, that, that's going to be happening. You know, there's going to be folks from city council and department of building zoning services going out to every area commission to walk folks through these. Um, there's going to be any number of different ways for folks to engage. But at the end of the day, um, folks know where we are. You know, they, they know where council meets on Monday nights at five o'clock. Uh, we're not going to be trying to hide the ball or, or, or make sure that folks don't know what's happening. I mean, we're, we are going to do our absolute best to make sure that folks understand what these changes mean and what they don't mean for their neighborhood. Uh, and hopefully you know, we have the opportunity to do something really big here that will, uh, again, 
change the fabric of the city moving forward because we know that change is necessary because of the growth that's coming. Um, but I think having the ability for folks to come down to that gallery in which they can have that one-on-one -on -one conversation, really understand about how we got here, um, and then also to be able to engage with council through the public hearing process and other ways that folks normally do, I think is going to be key towards, again, to the council president's point, allowing us to be radical listeners. So if we think that there's changes that need to be made with what's proposed, that we'll do so. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, we know that we need to bring this legislation forward to move the, move the city into the future. At first, I was feeling like really overwhelmed, honestly, with this topic, but like now I'm feeling excited. Yeah, good. I am. But thank you so much. Um, the, the last question is, um, you know, what, what would be your dream city? Mm. Oh, I love that question. <laughs> Uh, I think it goes to um, equity. I want to make sure that, um, as we say around here, that so there used to be a question for us who grew up in Columbus, are we ever going to get bigger? Are we ever going to get the shine and the appreciation for who we are? Coleman said, Coleman said it like this, uh, are we going to get our swagger? Um, those questions have been answered. We are going to get bigger. We are going to be a, a drastically bigger city than the city that I grew up in. Uh, but now the question is, can we be better as well? Can we um, do this growth? And really, I call it a grand experiment. There have been a, several cities that have grown over the last 20, 30 years, but not too many that have grown in a way that has really been good for everybody. Yeah. You look at Austin, you look at Nashville, you look at San Francisco, names of cities that we all know and that we've all visited. But the truth is, their police officers and their teachers can't afford to live in their communities. Um, if you go there on a Sunday, you are in traffic. Mm -hmm. um, they are expensive places that, that their growth was not good for everyone. Yeah. So when I dream of Columbus 25 years from now, I dream of a city that is bigger, but it is better. That, that the folks who have been here, the legacy Columbus folks and the folks who, have, who will have come, that million plus people that have come to our region, all live harmoniously. That, that regardless of uh, your economic station in life, that you find a place in our city. That you're able to have dignity in work, have dignity in taking care of your child, have uh, safety and, and, and um, a good job in our community. And these are all the things that we are working on right now. I, I say often that uh, the city that Rob and I get to lead right now is is pretty cool, but it's not just this great because of the work that we've done over the last five or six years. It was great because folks 20 years ago started doing some pretty exciting things, and, and we're just now getting to um, reap the benefits of that of that work. So if that is true, knowing that this growth is coming over the next 25 years, that means we are the ones right now, you and I, uh, and council members and residents who are literally building the city of the future. So like I said when we started, 2024 will be the year that we make the choice. Will we do the things that will look out for everybody for to make sure that your Noah and my Noah uh, get to live in a city that is truly for them. That's amazing, thank you. Uh, I don't know how, how you would <laughs> add to that answer. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, and Elliot, yeah, and Elliot. <laughs> um, so the, I mean, the one thing that I would say is when we started off this conversation around this code being 70 years old and the legacy that that brings, right? And the legacies that still exist in Columbus today from that, whether or not it's economic or racial segregation that has existed across Columbus, whether or not it's, you know, neighborhoods that were destroyed and displaced from highway construction. You think about like the legacies that folks have lived through uh, with that. I think when I think about my dream of Columbus is the opportunity for us to undo many of those mm -hmm. things. Um, we think about, we often say that a mixed income neighborhood is the healthiest, right? And we think about a time and place in our community, in our state, in our country in which too often um, people are afraid of one another. There's too often division between one another. And sometimes that can be uh, in any number of different ways in which um, society or culture wants to put barriers between folks. I think at the end of the day, when folks live next to one another, when they live down the street from one another, when they interact with the grocery store, they see them at the library, they see them at the park, that that builds a real sense of community. And I think when uh, I moved to Columbus 15 years ago, that was something that drew me to, to the city to stay. And it's something that I think is special about Columbus. And structurally, that, that has happened while a lot of our structures have discouraged that, right? And the zoning code has um, been part of that you know, system or structure that has try to discourage that. And our community is so much better than that because again, you, you, you have folks like me that come here and see this amazing close-knit community as we've also grown at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
And I can't imagine how much better we're going to be when we remove one of those structures in place that has tried to keep people apart, yeah. right? And for me anyways, when you think about what that does to us in the future, when we have that kind of community and culture already, and then we remove one of those systemic barriers, like how much, you know, how much our kids are gonna grow up in a place um, that is so much more interconnected, and how much that means towards um, you know, our civic life, our politics, uh, and also just the health of, of everyone in our city when we think about um, the environmental impacts mm -hmm. that happens when we have policies in place that only encourage suburban sprawl, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's the kind of hope that I have when I think about what, what I dream of Columbus is that the good parts of us that have managed to uh, thrive and grow even though our systems have sort of pushed away from it, well, what happens when we take those systems away and we actually encourage that connectivity between everyone even more so? Um, you know, that's what I think about in the next 10, 20, 30 years about the opportunity that we have and this is a key part of making that happen. I'm Josie Smith. Thanks for watching City Chat on CTV.